YouTubers. Now in this video, we will be covering the example of Wi-Fi telnet to serials from file examples into ESP266 Wi-Fi into Wi-Fi telnet to serial. So watching this video, you will come to know what is a telnet protocol or how does it works on what is the port used for telnet protocol, how ESP will able to communicate with other devices using this protocol, using this port. Then you will also come to know a topic inside an IoT, a soft topic inside an IoT which is called a machine to machine talk. Yeah, you can use this protocol for machine to machine talk. Previously I made an interesting project, a very interesting project using this particular uh, example of telnet to serial. So this is all and many more thing you will learn today by watching this video. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, rather than moving, rather than studying this code, I, let me move towards my edited version, which in which I have commented uh, uh, many such thing which will make you uh, understand this code better. Okay, so this is my edited version of this uh, talent to serial example. Okay, so let's start. First of all, the necessary declaration of ESP to serial Wi-Fi attached header file. After that, moving towards the next line where it is written as hash defined max underscore server underscore clients space two. This line defines that how many clients are allowed to subscribe to connect with this particular server on ESP8266. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you that what will be happening after uploading this example. So as soon as we upload this example, our ESP8266 board will act as a server. Now, now this is not that local server which we have seen in Wi-Fi access point in which we need to connect to the ESP8266 by entering this host name and password. No, it's not like that. But rather we will be connecting our client by the local IP address assigned to this board by our router. So it may sound confusing, but you have, if you have seen my uh, previous video of Wi-Fi access point, you will be uh, getting the difference between uh, uh, access point and a local server. That is the basic difference. So in this, we are acting as a local server in which we are connect connecting with this board by its local IP address assigned by the router. So this is how this will act as a server and after that it will communicate with other clients connected to ESP8266 board. For that it will be utilizing its client instance. So we are declaring a server instance as well as a client instance both in this code. So here it is written as maximum server clients is equal to 2. So the line has defined maximum server clients is equal is 2 defines that it will allow only 2 clients to get connected with that ESP8266 board. It won't be allowing more than 2 clients. Uh, to get connected with this board. You can change the limit. Uh, initially in the uh, default code it was only one client so I will change it to two. Uh, I will show you by connecting to uh, two of the clients with this ESP266 board. So moving ahead we need to enter the SID name and password of our router from which it will be getting the local IP address. So after that it is initializing the server at port 23. Now Telnet uses the port 23 as a default port for an insecure communication. There is also uh, another port which in which a telnet secure communication works but I don't remember exact uh, which port is for secure but anyway you can go ahead and check out on the Wikipedia page about the TCP UDP ports and uh, you can check out for telnet unsecure and telnet secured version. So this is port default port for uh, telnet communication it is 23 in on which the server instance is declared and after that the server client instance which is nothing but a Wi-Fi client instance is declared with the maximum server clients which is nothing but the 2. Okay so before that let me tell you that what is telnet protocol. Now telnet stands for telecommunication networking. This is the protocol used for only text based communication between devices between the devices yes you can uh, send the messages or text messages from one device to another device or from one device to multiple device. You can just broadcast the message to all the devices at the same time using this telnet protocol. So it's basically like a short message service, uh, not really short, you can uh, send a long string also, but it is strictly limited within the local connection for this example and uh, it is strictly limited for text based communication only. So this is what telnet is all about. So after that going to set up here the default port will learn 5.0 for ESP12 board then Wi-Fi.begin it will be uh, connecting to our router by this uh, simple line. Now here it is trying to connect a particular host for 20 times if it's not connected it will automatically reset. So this is something different 
uh, than what we have seen in all other examples. In all other examples, what they were doing that they were waiting until we got the status equal to WL underscore connected. So until and unless it was connected, it will be in the, stuck in the while loop and it will just print out dot 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 and it will be stuck there only. While in this example, what they did, they will be waiting for uh, 20 times or they will be try to connect the particular host for 20 times and on the 21st time, so this board automatically gets resets and uh, just start the co code from the beginning. So this is something different they did in this particular example. So after that they start the UART communication and the server. UART communication by serial dot begin on the what you can say example code they have written serial one dot begin. So do take care of that if you are using the example code. You need to edit that serial one to serial dot begin. Then we have uh, in this we have begin the server also by a simple like uh, command called server dot begin. Now server dot set no delay is equal to true now what this line means so first of all uh, let me make it clear that telnet uses or this particular example uses the tcp communication for tcp protocol for this uh, data transfer now if you have watched my uh, second video of this series which was uh, ntp client uh, in that video i have discussed about what the difference between tcp and udp so you can go ahead and watch that video for to see the basic difference now in this uh, tcp I will just uh, tell you about uh, the TCP which is related to this particular line. In TCP communication, uh, it is regarded as a reliable communication in which we are, we are sending the data, we are waiting for the acknowledgement, we have error connection uh, bits in that and that whole data communication or the whole process is reliable because in that protocol we have error correction bit, we have feedback procedure, we have acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement, all the things we have in that protocol so that uh, we can rely that our data will be successfully or accurately be received at the receiver side. So that is what about TCP communication. Now in this server.set no delay true. So what, what will happen in this TCP communication or TCP protocol is that uh, let's take an example that this is the client 1 this is the client 2. The client 1 wants to send the data packets to client 2 via TCP protocol. Okay so if there is uh, we haven't written this then what was going to happen was that uh, first of all client 1 will set the data 1 into its local buffer. After setting the data into the local buffer it will be sending the data to the client 2. So there are two possibilities, client 2 will either send a positive acknowledgement or a negative acknowledgement. In case it is uh, sending the positive acknowledgement, what client 1 will do, client 1 will remove the data from the buffer and load the next data and send. But if negative acknowledgement is received, the data already stored in the buffer will be sent to the client 2. So this is the normal procedure what is, what is done in this TCP. But by setting this line called set no delay to true, what will happen now is that the data 1 will be loaded into the client uh, buffer it will be sent to the client 2 and as soon as the uh, it is sent to the client 2 the data 1 will be removed from the buffer and data 2 will be loaded into the buffer that is uh, now again we have two chances positive acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement in case positive acknowledgement no need to worry we are uh, quick to send the second data because already it is loaded into the buffer so this function will remove that delay of storing the data 1 until the acknowledgement is received so this delay will be removed by this function and in case if it, it is received, if it receives a negative acknowledgement, it will again try to load the data one and it will resend the data. So still this connection is reliable. So this is what does this line means and I have written here uh, in short that won't be storing the data into the buffer and wait for the acknowledgement, rather send the next data and in case negative acknowledgement is received, it will resend the whole data. So this is the conclusion of my this whole client one client to story. <laughs> Okay, so after that moving ahead, we have ready to use Telnet at a local IP which is uh, which will be getting by this uh, simple function called wifi.localip. This is a function in which we get uh, the local IP address assigned to this Wi-Fi board. So here written as uh, local IP space 23 to connect. The 23 is nothing but the port used for Telnet or Telnet communication or Telnet protocol. Okay, so here now this code is divided into three parts. So in the first part, in the first for loop, it is checking for the number of clients available. In the second for loop, it is checking for the data received from any of the client. So it will be just reading out the data by this simple line called server client, I'm sorry, server clients bracket i means ith number of uh, client dot read. Now this function will just read out the data and will print in our serial monitor by serial dot write function. And in the third uh, loop or the yeah in the third for loop it will be printing the data it will be broadcasting the data whatever we write in our serial monitor it will be whatever we write in a serial monitor and whenever we press enter it will just broadcast to all the clients connected to this particular uh, server of our ESP two six six four. This is the simple code. Now how the machine to machine talk can be implemented is that. 
uh, we can implement this code into multiple ESP266. We can communicate all the ESP266 to one uh, local server and we just can uh, establish a talk between all the ESP266. We can even establish a talk between a mobile phone and ESP266. So this is basically a machine to machine talk. You can watch out my uh, project using this example, which I made during my internship at EFY. And the link of that video is available in the description. You can go ahead and watch out the project. Uh, that project utilizes the machine to machine talk in which uh, I have made a smart keychain, uh, which uh, in case if that get, that keychain is lost, I can just find out that keychain using my smartphone because my smartphone can talk to my keychain, basically a machine to machine talk. A very interesting project. You can go ahead and watch that video. You will love to uh, explore that project. So first of all, let's upload the code and let's connect our telephone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> let's connect our phone to this and see what happens. Which we just open the serial monitor. Okay, it shows connecting to my uh, router, which is SMS. Okay, it is connected and the local IP address is assigned. Now we need to connect our devices to this particular IP address. Okay, so I can just uh, show the uh, recording on my, of the screen of only one phone. On this this phone, the recording is not supported. I don't know why, but uh, I have connected both these devices on my uh, same router on which my USB is to six is connected because we need to we can talk only in a local area connection. So you need to attach all or connect all the clients into the single router. So I'll be establishing the connection. Now, first of all, uh, this phone on which the screen recording is on. After that, I'll be Okay, first of all, let me attach or let me connect the device on which the screen recording is off. So the IP address is 174. Okay, so as you can see that client one is, uh, sorry, new client is connected, which is this device. Now I will try to connect my this phone. Okay, on the port 23. As you can see that we got another client on us on another on this also oh, okay so we got another client on our serial monitor now let's uh, type something like uh, uh, qwerty and just go so as you can see that i got the response uh, on the serial monitor as qwerty i will just send uh, my name on through my second phone or second client okay as you can see that my name is printed just sachin and as soon as i type uh, anything on serial monitor like hello devices so this will be broadcasted into both the phones so i received this hello devices on both of my devices you can trust on me that if it is not visible on the second screen but yeah uh, there's this hello devices on both the uh, clients so this is how the we can establish a machine to machine uh, talk using this simple 10 net to serial uh, example this is a very interesting and very useful example just explore this example so okay so this is it about this uh, example of wi-fi telnet to serial uh, subscribe my channel for upcoming uh, videos on this particular esp266 series how do you then explore and share with me techie sms